All right, good morning, every, oh, sorry, good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to today's Tech Tuesday. Um, we're gonna be talking about Microsoft OneDrive today, which is our official cloud storage solution here at Wall Cornell. Um, I have a couple of hosts with me today. I've got Rafael Supa and also Danny Bonsoner is gonna be joining us later. Um, and they're both our resident um, Microsoft O365 experts. Um, and they're gonna be teaching you um, about what OneDrive is, how you can use it, how it can um, be a really good storage solution um, for all your files and, and needs. Um, before I get started, there um, are, if for anybody who's new to Tech Tuesday, um, there are a few people who are joining today. So I do have everybody's microphone off just to make sure we don't have any background noise distractions. If you have any questions at any point during the session, um, you can type it in the chat or you can do the raise hand button that's under in um, the reactions. Um, tab at the bottom of your Zoom window, and I can unmute you if you wanted to ask a question, um, you know, directly to Raphael and Danny. Um, I'll also be recording today's session so that later on I can send you a copy of the video as long as well as some helpful guides. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'll send that out in an email at the end of today or by tomorrow morning, um, just so that you can go back and reference anything that you may have missed during the session. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand the reins over to Raphael. Well, hey folks, uh, uh, Vanessa, thank you very much for the intro. Um, hello everyone, thanks for joining our session today. Again, I'm uh, Rafael Supa, I'm the uh, manager of the O365 and collaboration team here at Wild Cornell Medicine. And with, with me is uh, Danny Bonsonor. He's on my team and one of our uh, senior uh, cloud engineers. So um, we're happy to be here and happy that you joined the session. Uh, which will focus today on the uh, OneDrive for Business uh, service, which is part of our overall O365 uh, email and messaging collaboration service. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and, and start the uh, slide deck. Uh, Vanessa, can you just confirm that you can see and everyone can see my shared screen with the yeah, slide? Everything looks great. Okay, awesome. I'll go ahead and proceed to the next slide and get into a quick uh, intro and background on what Microsoft OneDrive for Business is. Um, for those who don't know, uh, OneDrive for Business is a, a secure cloud-based storage service for uh, storing, sharing, and collaborating on uh, files and folders in our environment. Uh, it is part or is, um, already part of our existing O365 suite of services, so we already own it. Everyone is uh, licensed for it and everyone should have uh, access to the service. Uh, one of the nice things about it is that it's uh, accessible from uh, anywhere as it is a cloud service. So just as well as you can work with OneDrive in the office, you can also uh, work with files stored on OneDrive from um, any remote location from your home office when you're on the road, whether you're on a um, laptop or a smartphone or other device, uh, it's just um, makes things a lot more flexible in that way. Um, how much storage do, do we get? So everyone gets a default of one terabyte of cloud storage for each uh, OneDrive account. And that can be bumped up as per request. Uh, I believe right now the limit is uh, five terabytes. So it's, it's quite a good, good amount of storage. For, for everyone um, and uh, you know, literally you can, you can do a lot with uh, work documents with that much storage. Uh, also, you know, importantly, it is a secure storage and it has been approved by our security team uh, for storing PHI data and other sensitive data. So it, it is you know, uh, locked down by Microsoft uh, best uh, security practices as well as our own um, uh, O365 security and logon mechanisms, so it is approved. Um, going on to the next slide, what are some of the other benefits of OneDrive for Business? So, you know, as I uh, kind of alluded to already, um, you can store and organize your work documents securely in a cloud environment, so a centralized environment. Um, you can easily share documents with coworkers. Uh, where they can review, edit, uh, and collaborate in other ways on your documents. Um, sh sharing the documents is, is easy, it's efficient, and it is a lot better than emailing and attaching large uh, attachments to your emails. It just makes things easier to collaborate in a central, uh, a cent centralized sort of way. Um, you can synchronize documents that are stored in the cloud to, uh, again, to your, your, your computer, uh, a mobile device, 
um, and other options. So it's, it's very flexible that way. It does sort of untether us from, you know, if, if you're used to or familiar with uh, working uh, within a, um, a file storage server environment that, that, that may be only accessible to you if you're in the office, uh, this sort of, uh, you know, breaks that tether and um, you can access those files from anywhere should you choose to uh, move some of those files to your uh, OneDrive service. Um, just going on to the next slide, uh, our agenda for today will be to go over, again, the um, basics of, of OneDrive for Business in our environment. So, um, how to access the uh, OneDrive service. Uh, we'll go through some of the uh, features of the, uh, the web-based portal when you access OneDrive for Business through the uh, O365 homepage. Uh, we'll go into uh, some of the sh sharing options. Uh, you know, uh, just a quick overview, but sharing is available for internal Wild Cornell uh, users, colleagues, as well as certain external users. Uh, there are some sharing limitations. We'll go into that. Uh, we'll go through the um, the sync icon of the uh, uh, the actual sync app um, and some of the uh, settings that are involved and how multiple accounts can be set up. Uh, we'll go into some of the uh, file explorer and finder on on the Mac if you're a Mac user. So so you using um, your local uh, file explorer, local storage to sync the data instead of the uh, web-based um, uh, portal and how to manage files that way. Uh, we'll talk, talk a little bit about the files on demand feature, both on, on Windows and for Mac. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, integration with Office apps and how you can easily save and access um, files that you've stored in uh, OneDrive using some of your Office applications. And we'll also if we have, if time allows, we'll go into um, um, Mac OS functionality uh, talk and a little demo um, on that. Again, if we if we have time for that, as it is a little bit different. Um, okay, with, with that, I'll, what I'll do is I'll turn off my my video for now, and I'd like to go into just a demo and you know begin the uh, the demo of uh, how to access OneDrive and uh, and other features. Oh, before I forget, you know, j just regarding um, accessing OneDrive. Uh, so regarding different clients, you know, whether you're a Windows user or a Mac user. So uh, OneDrive is avail available for, for most of the devices. If you're a Windows 10 user, uh, you're in luck. It's already part of Windows 10 or 11 by default. And all you have to do is uh, find the app and uh, sign in and um, sign in with your work account and you're ready to go. Um, for Mac users, you can use the uh, the Jamf uh, feature to uh, uh, download um, the OneDrive application. You can also go to the App Store. Similar, uh, if you are an iOS or uh, Android user, you can go to the respective um, App Stores for those uh, vendors, those phones, and uh, download the application there. <clears throat> Again, all you have to do is sign in with your uh, work account, you'll be asked for your uh, duo prompt to make sure that it's secure and it's you. And uh, once done, you can sign in and begin working with documents remotely. Okay, what I'll do now is just stop my video <clears throat> and make sure that's the end of the slide. Okay, so <clears throat> if you're accessing um, OneDrive for the first time. Again, the best way to do it is to go to uh, o365.med.cornell.edu, the same way that you would go to uh, any of the other O365 applications and your homepage. Um, and uh, you will uh, be landed here. If, if, you, if you have never used OneDrive before, um, it should be a pretty clean slate. So, so from your O365 homepage, you may have to uh, hit the uh, what they call the waffle icon, uh, go to the OneDrive app. And once you do that, uh, you may get into a sort of an empty screen if you don't have any files or folders there, it'll just tell you that uh, your OneDrive is ready. So uh, this is just a demo account. So I'll just open that. And for the purposes of this demo, I populated a couple of folders um, in my own account. So I will switch over 
to a little bit more uh, busy area. Give me one second, please. Okay. Um, so again, what I did here is go to the o365.med.cornell homepage, waffle icon, OneDrive, and I am landed in my uh, OneDrive uh, web portal homepage, which should look like this. Uh, just to go over the screen a little bit here. So again, um, in the uh, upper left uh, left uh, top corner, you have the, the waffle icon, which you can navigate from here to any of your uh, other O365 apps. And across the top, you have your uh, search bar where you can uh, begin searching for files or folders. Uh, you'll find that pretty handy, you know, once, once your OneDrive uh, area gets, gets more populated, it gets very crowded, you may find that, that uh, having a search function is helpful here. Um, there are different search uh, criteria that you can apply as well. Uh, there is a settings icon where you can get into more advanced settings for OneDrive. Um, help and your profile icon, where, which you can use to view the uh, details of your account as well as uh, sign out of your account uh, if you're done using it. Um, just going to uh, uh, the left bottom here uh, across the side, we have the, um, the My Files area, which is your <clears throat> main area for your, um, your files and folders. That's uh, pretty much the, the root of your OneDrive. This is where everything will, will start. Uh, recent, any files that you have worked on recently will show here. Shared will show you things that have been shared either by you or with you. And we'll go into all of, all of these a little bit later. Um, there is also Recycle Bin, which stores files which have been um, deleted either you know accidentally or if you've deleted something on a purpose but feel like you need it back. Uh, you can go to the uh, Recycle Bin icon um, and you can retrieve things um, up to, I believe it's 30 days. So you have up to 30 days to change your mind or try to retrieve something um, that you cannot find anymore. Uh, the quick access area is um, a little bit hard to, I would say hard to uh, explain at first. So uh, just because of um, the L365 features being so integrated, you know, sometimes you may be in a Microsoft team or SharePoint site um, and that has its own data. It's based on the same technology. So these are basically shortcuts to some of these other repositories that you may be a part of. And you may have, you may have access to those fi the files there as well as part of, uh, you know, being a member of that team or SharePoint site or what have you. Uh, so you will see some of that here. It's just meant for um, quick access as a shortcut, like I said. Um, across the top here, we have the uh, new button where you can create, uh, begin creating folders. Uh, you can actually create Word, Excel, and other Office documents that are uh, that start off uh, in the web-based apps. Um, so you know, instead of going to the actual Office application, you can begin to create documents for collaborating and sharing right from your uh, OneDrive screen. Um, you can begin uploading files or folders. Again, if, if you are new to OneDrive, you may not have much here. And a great way to start is by hitting uh, upload and you can upload individual files or entire, entire folders. And if you do that, it'll um, take you to an explorer. If you're on Windows, an explore uh, sort of finder uh, screen where you can navigate to um, local folders or files that you may have and begin uploading them as well. Um, interesting to note is that I can also drag and drop uh, folders or files right into this window. So again, if you're just beginning to populate and move things into your uh, OneDrive storage, um, you can, for example, have this web-based screen open in one area. Um, you can go to open a uh, Explorer view, an Explorer window in another part of your screen. And uh, you can, for example, do that and the file will be uploaded as well. So drag and drop works as well if you're starting off and have a lot of stuff to um, upload. Um, and here I just got a status message that my uh, document has been success successfully uploaded and I, I can now share it and do other things with it. 
Uh, the uh, sync button here is used to begin a sync process. So if you, uh, we'll talk about the sync agent in a little bit, but if you have not started or logged into the actual OneDrive uh, sync app um, as part of Windows, you, you can start the process uh, here. And in this case, it'll tell me that we're syncing your files. Uh, I already have logged on, so my files are already being synced, but this is one way to, uh, to kick up the sync process and start it up. Automate is just a uh, uh, more advanced feature that's part of the O365 services. Um, it requires special licensing. So, so we'll, we'll mainly skip over that. If anyone has more, more questions, we'll uh, be happy to, to feel them afterwards. But in essence, it's, it's a way to uh, create some automation or workflows for uh, files or processes that you, you may have, um, you know, leveraging OneDrive and SharePoint. Um, there are some view management controls as well. So I can sort my view by, uh, by file type, file name, uh, date modified, et cetera. And I can change the, uh, the list uh, view to, to uh, compact list tiles or go back to list or get more information for um, any, uh, any file or folder in this view. Um, once you have files and folders populated and you may want to begin to uh, share them with uh, colleagues, for example, for collaboration purposes, uh, you can do that in uh, several different ways. So you can go to the, uh, the folder or a file, it depends what you wanna share. So you can share both files and folders the same if uh, I would say a folder is best for sharing if you have uh, you know quite a few items inside of the folder um, so instead of sharing everything individually you want to share it uh, all at once then you would share at the folder level otherwise you would share at the uh, file level so for example if I want I just created this file as a test and if I want to wanted to share it quickly with uh, someone let's say Vanessa I can click on the uh, the, the, uh, the sharing icon and uh, it'll ask for a name. I can type in Vanessa's name. I can type in multiple people, of course. I can include a message. I could choose to um, send the, uh, the link in full Outlook, but for, you know, for the purposes of this test, let's just do a quick sharing test. Okay, so this file has just been shared with uh, Vanessa as a test. I can now go to um, the uh, ellipses next to the uh, file name, manage access. And I can see that this file is shared. I can now stop sharing if I no longer need to collaborate. I can see who it's shared with and the, um, the sharing level. So in this case, the person has direct access and I can change uh, whether the person has view only or uh, editor rights, et cetera. So this is all from the manage access uh, window. Um, to go back, this is what uh, was sometimes known as a, a bread trail or breadcrumb trail. Go back to the uh, root of the repository, my files, and I could do something similar to the entire folder. I can select the folder, sharing either through uh, this icon, uh, the uh, quick shortcut icon, or the ellipses, again, and share. Uh, sometimes questions come up whether uh, files and folders could be shared with external recipients. Um, and the answer is, is that yes, to some extent. So uh, working with our security team, uh, we have enabled the sharing of uh, OneDrive and other O365 data with uh, certain partner institutions, other academic institutions as well. So it's not um, it's not for everyone uh, externally. But there is a list, you know, and feel free to uh, reach out to us after uh, after the uh, session. But you know, the major institutions are included. So NYP, Columbia, uh, MSKCC are already included. 
Uh, so you can feel free to share and collaborate, send links to colleagues at those institutions, as well as uh, most other uh, educational institutions. If there is um, a new external entity or vendor that, that you're collaborating with, with that is not on the list yet, uh, you can uh, enter a request into the service desk and uh, that will be reviewed. And uh, we can then go ahead and add a new entity and you'd be able to share with them as well. Uh, of course, you know, based on review. Um, that is the, uh, for the most part, the um, uh, web-based console. Again, I mentioned that, that, that this is a great way to start off and begin populating your uh, OneDrive uh, storage uh, folder in O365. Uh, once you do that, and let's say you have not um, logged into the sync application yet, uh, which is um, easy to tell if you look on a Windows PC on your uh, status bar area uh, near the clock, and other status icons, you, you may see several cloud icons. If you have one account, uh, it'll be a blue icon and that's usually the, uh, the corporate or institutional account. In my case, I have a personal account as well and that's the, the white icon. And this is where you can configure your uh, OneDrive sync settings um, and other, other settings related to OneDrive. If you don't have that started yet, what you can do is, on a Windows PC, again, go to your search bar and simply type in um, OneDrive and click open and the OneDrive app should open. And once it does, it'll ask you what you would like to sync, um, which folders you would like to pull down. Uh, again, the uh, the sync is two way. So, so once, once you're set up, if you're working locally on your PC, that data will get synced up to the cloud. Uh, conversely, if you're if you're working from the uh, web-based portal, any new folders and files that you uh, edit or, or um, create in the cloud will be synced down to your uh, PC, which has the uh, the OneDrive agent configured as the uh, the sync is two-way. Um, so again, once I have the um, excuse me, once I have the uh, sync agent configured, blue icon, I can uh, click on it. I can go to uh, Help and Settings. Go to settings again, and here's where I can see details on my account. So the account that I'm, my primary account that I'm using to uh, sync to this PC. In this case, I see that I have uh, two locations share, uh, syncing. One is my, my OneDrive and one is a uh, SharePoint uh, site. Now we can talk about that in a little bit as well. Uh, the various settings for uh, OneDrive Sync. So, so whether OneDrive starts automatically or not, when Windows starts, um, when to pause syncing, et cetera. Um, so this is a great place to go if you want to uh, go ahead and um, choose. For, for example, if I wanted to, to choose which folders to sync uh, to this account, I can go here and click on uh, choose folders and manage that. So for example, you may have a PC uh, that uh, does not have a large hard drive, you know, and, and your OneDrive um, in the cloud has quite a bit of uh, files and folders, you know, maybe things that you don't wanna pull down to this PC specifically. Um, in that case, you would uh, go, go here and uh, choose the folders to sync and uncheck anything that you don't wanna sync and that will not sync to this device. However, it will be available um, to you in the, in the web, in the cloud, uh, web-based uh, portal at all times. Okay. Once, once you have the, um, the sync set up, what you can do is um, go to that folder in your file explorer view. So if, if you're not sure where that file uh, or folder is, I can again go to, uh, the, uh, the sync icon, help and settings, and I can go ahead and open my med.cornell.edu folder. And that will bring up a uh, Explorer view with uh, 
my two locations that I'm syncing now. So the one I'm interested in right now is the uh, OneDrive med.cornell.edu and that denotes the uh, uh, my my personal account. The um, in the sense that it's it's my own files, not not a, a SharePoint or team files. Once I'm here, I can go ahead and click into the folder and work on these uh, folders just like any other folders uh, on my PC. So for example, um, what I created just a few minutes ago in the cloud, I can go ahead and open this document, edit it, save it back. It'll sync, sync back up to the cloud. I see a sync status icon over here as well. And this, uh, the cloud icon means that it is uh, stored in the cloud and I'm just getting a, uh, a link to it here. So it's not fully stored on my PC yet. And I see a little sharing status uh, symbol as well, meaning that the uh, file is shared uh, with someone already. Um, from here, I can just right click and go into a certain OneDrive settings as well. So I can go back to sharing. So now instead of sharing from the web portal, I'm now configuring sharing from my file explorer view. So let's say I want to now to add Danny to this. And I can do that. I can configure the sharing permissions uh, right here as well. Whether he can view only, currently it's view only. I can make him an editor of the file and send. And at this point, Danny will get an email uh, notifying him that a file has been shared and then he can follow the, uh, the link to access the file. Uh, very similar, if your uh, recipient is external, they will get an email as well. Uh, the only difference is that because they're an external recipient, they will be asked to uh, just confirm their email as, a, as part of a two-step verification process to make sure that the uh, file is shared securely with them. Okay, so Vanessa, I'll, I'll pause for a minute. I'm not sure, if, uh, do, do we wanna take questions at, uh, at the end, right? You can take questions uh, a few now if you want. Danny's been doing a great job of um, answering everybody in the chat, but I can pull a couple up that I think may be beneficial um, you know, for everybody to hear if they haven't been following the chat. Um, you had mentioned before that our OneDrive accounts um, come with one terabyte of space and there've been some questions about whether that can be increased and if there's a cost to increase. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So they can be increased to up to five terabytes um, and there is no cost associated with that. It's part of our contract with Microsoft, part of our O365 licensing. Awesome. Um, there's also been some questions about using OneDrive versus Box and which is better. I'm not sure if you wanna touch on, you know, when there might be a better use case scenario for one over the other. I. You know, I think it depends on preference. I know Box has been around for a while and some people are used to um, using it. Uh, I would say that, um, you know, you may want to begin using uh, OneDrive a little bit more or get into it if you have not already, uh, mainly because, you know, it's, it's, it's part of our O365 offering. It integrates very well with other Office applications. And uh, if we ever consolidate services, you know, I, I think that OneDrive may win out just because we already have it and we have O365. Um, so we, we may, you know, there's no set date yet, but we may at one point need to migrate our data from Box to OneDrive. And Box, you're, you're not supposed to share any PHI or PII um, related files in Box, correct? Um, as far as I know, I believe that's correct, yeah. Okay. Um, and there's a good question here about what happens um, if you're sharing files um, with a colleague and they happen to leave while Cornell, what happens to those files? Would you still have ac access? What's the process for when somebody leaves the institution? Uh, yeah, that, that's a great question too. So when someone leaves the institution, you know, um, the manager, of course, retains the right to, uh, to get access to uh, those folders. If, if there are any other, you know, processes or anything that needs to be closed out. Uh, the person's manager can uh, get access, you know, they, uh, th that data can be archived. If you have already left, you know, um, then I, th I think access would be limited, unfortunately. Um, 
the other factor is that when accounts are terminated after a while, you know, they, they do get removed after a few months, so that, that data will go away eventually. Um, but, you know, if you have um, not saved anything, you know, then, um, and, you, and you've already left, then, you know, it, it'd be very tough. So basically, as, as much as you can, plan ahead and, and try to transition those files um, before a colleague leaves the institution. Yep, yep. You know, of course, keeping in mind, you know, what, what is personal, what is, you know, um, institutional owned and, and all that stuff. Um, oh, as a follow up to that, somebody just asked if an individual changes to another division, um, does that affect file access or no? Like they're still within the institution, but maybe they change to another department or something like that. Uh, so, so just, you know, changing departments on the HR side does not impact your entitlements in 0365. Uh, that uh, that stays the same un unless you configure permissions differently, you know. So um, again, going to going back to your um, files and folders, you know, for example, looking at them and uh, and I see here that that okay, this one is already shared, you know. But my role is changing, so let let me go into those sharing options. Let me go to manage access and um, change that around. So I would have to, you know change that if, if, if I didn't get a chance to. Uh, I may uh, have to ask admins, you know, call it into the service desk to to ask uh, a team like, like, you know, my team, the admin team to, uh, to help out with that. Um, if somebody is using Box right now um, and they, let's say they wanted to start using OneDrive um, and they wanted to migrate their files over, what's the best way to do that? Could they just put a ticket in with support? Uh, you know, they could start there if it's not, um, a huge number of files and folders, I would say that doing sort of um, a manual migration on your own might be best. And that's, you know, that's just making sure that, for example, the stuff from Box is, um, you know, possibly synced to your PC, and then you, you can drag and drop those folders over to, to your OneDrive folder. Perfect. You know, that, that's one way of doing it. The, the help desk doesn't have any special tools right now, unfortunately, for uh, doing that kind of migration. So, you know, I think they, they would be limited as well. They would have to do the, a similar thing. Okay. So like if you have box, just sync it to your own computer and then sync it back into OneDrive is essentially maybe the best um, way to, to go about it. Yes. Okay, great. Um, is, is there anything you, else you wanted to show? Um, there are, um, you know, a lot of questions and Danny's answering them, but I, I also know that we're um, getting to the end of the, the time. So I wanted to make sure you, you were showing everything you needed. Yeah, you know, I just wanted to go back to, you know, the web console, the, the web portal for OneDrive, which is, again, a great place to start and, and even to work. You know, if, if you don't feel like working with uh, local files and folders, you can keep working uh, in the web portal. And um, I think I neglected to go through uh, into more detail into a couple of these settings. So, for example, um, we, we, we did my files, but recent is important as well. So any, anything you may have created or changed recently, shared recently, of course, will be here. Um, so you can access that quickly. Again, you can use the search bar for that as well. Uh, shared uh, is very important as well. This is, again, you can manage items that have been um, shared with you. So shared with me or shared by me. So, so two tabs over here um, that will be important to look at. So, you know, any, anything that has been shared uh, by other, other workers, you know, with you, uh, I'll see here. So when was it shared? Who was it shared by? Um, and the files are here. Again, this, this could be uh, built up over time. As you, as you can see, my, you know, my repository is just pretty long here if you've been working with it for a while. And, and that's because, um, also, if, if you're working within Microsoft Teams, let's say um, things that are uh, shared with uh, files that are you know uploaded and shared within um, the Teams service are represented in in the OneDrive view as well if they're shared in in chats. So so that's why this could get you know this list can get pretty built up and um, the uh, search bar will be even even more important for that. Um, and then for items that are shared by me, you know, shared by me with other people, I'll see here as well, um, everything that I've shared. And um, if I decide that, okay, this collaboration is no longer needed, um, then uh, I can remove the sharing here. Um, 
just uh, I think one other thing I wanted to show real very quickly, Vanessa, is regarding uh, uh, file collaboration. So for example, if I wanted to go into my demo folder and create a um, new workbook, um, call it test two, something else. If I need to save this workbook, I can just click on the uh, name over here. and hit enter. Once I save it and share it, uh, what it will allow me to do is have real-time collaboration. So for example, if, if I sent this file to Vanessa or Danny or anyone else, um, we can work on the file at the same time. So I can be in this file um, and uh, if I'm editing a cell, there'll be a status icon that shows me editing this, as well as if someone else is editing at the same time. Um, and there is a version history as well. So you can um, real time collaborate in files. And that's not just in the web app view. If, if you go ahead and um, click on editing and open in desktop app, um, because these apps are now integrated with O365, um, we can have real time collaboration uh, in both the desktop apps as well as the web apps. So um, I did want to show that and uh, the uh, uh, very quickly the integration with other uh, office apps. So you may have noticed in the um, newer versions of Excel, Word and other office apps. But um, if you go to, you know, let's say start a new document and then uh, go to file and save as our uh, cloud locations are pretty integrated at this point. So any, any cloud location, whether it's my OneDrive um, for work, OneDrive personal, um, as well as SharePoint sites uh, that I have access to uh, will be listed here. So you can um, begin working and saving files uh, in the desktop apps and save them directly to the cloud as well. And this way you can open them later on, open them in the um, web console or other desktop apps with no problem and really from anywhere because now they're saved in the cloud. So I just wanted to uh, mention that. And um, I know we spoke about doing a, uh, uh, just a quick topic on uh, the, uh, the Mac options for OneDrive for Business. Uh, so on, on a Mac, it works in a very similar way. There is a, a sync agent as well. Uh, one important, important thing to note is that recently um, Microsoft uh, came out with a new version of the async client for, for Macs. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, the change there is that um, they made the default so that all the files and folders that you have locally um, are now stored in the cloud by, by default. So you still see them, you see links to those files and folders, but um, um, none of them will be stored on your local device unless you specifically choose to save them there uh, by going into um, the finder window, right clicking and um, uh, choosing to store on my device. So just, just one thing to keep in mind regarding the, uh, um, the difference between the uh, Windows and the Mac sync clients. Um, with that, I think I'll, I'll stop sharing now. And, and Danny, I don't know if, if you are set up to, uh, to show that maybe very quickly, we can just demo the, uh, the Mac version of the client. Sure, thank you, Rafael. Uh, let me see if I go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yep. All right. So here, this is a Mac OS Monterey. I'm running the latest version. And this is the latest version of the OneDrive Sync client. On here, you'll notice that uh, you get a pop-up message saying that by default, files do not take up any space on this device. If you need a file offline, right-click it in Finder and choose always keep on this device. So that's the default for OneDrive on Mac now that they use uh, files on demand. Some of the settings that you'll notice is that you'll still have the same settings as what you have on Windows. Um, within the Finder window here, you'll see that under locations, your OneDrive folder will be kept here. 
you'll be able to go ahead and click on some folders here. Uh, this is just a, a test uh, OneDrive, so you won't you know, see any files on here. These are just um, uh, some folders I had created. You can also right click on the folder, and this is where you can click on always keep on this device. Once the device, once the file has been downloaded, if you have made all the changes and saved it, uh, you can also click on free up space. And what that'll do is that it'll delete the cached file from your local device and only keep it on the cloud. So you can free up space from your uh, local machine. This is good because most Macs, as you know, uh, the default storage for them is usually about 250 gigs. So most people uh, you know, like to free up a lot of space on their computers um, if they can since they're working with limited space. Another item is uh, working within Microsoft Office. You'll notice here that uh, you'll have the auto save feature, same as on Windows. So on here, if you're typing, you can click on auto save and by default, it'll try to save to your OneDrive. If you click on save, it'll upload. And now anything you start typing moving forward will automatically be saved. And you don't have to worry about going back and clicking on save file as many people forget, you know, to click on save file to save the latest changes, this automatically saves the changes for you. And you can also do online real-time collaboration and add comments and share the file right from here as well. And some of the settings, let me just minimize this. Here you'll notice some of the settings are the same by default again, files on demand is turned on. And here you can view your account. You can view the syncing location. You can choose the folders that you want to make available. So if I don't want some of these folders being available on my local Mac, I can simply just select the folders that I do want available. And those folders that'll be available will be just a, a link to the cloud folder. So again, the files will not be stored locally. Down here, you could, you'll notice the path where the OneDrive folder will exist. So it's tied to your local user profile on a Mac. And here you'll notice the version. So again, depending on which version of Mac you're on, if you're on the latest one, you should be uh, on the latest updated one, which is 22. Um, older versions, uh, the files on the man is treated a little bit different. You still have the option to toggle it off, but moving forward, that option is being changed. All right, thank you very much. And uh, I'll take it back to you, Raphael. All right, thanks, Danny. Maybe let's take it back to Vanessa and, and the uh, the crowd. Uh, if there's any more questions, you know, maybe we'll take the last couple of minutes to answer questions. Hey guys, um, we did have um, a, a good question here from Sadia um, who was asking about limit if there were any limitations between Mac and PC with the OneDrive client. I didn't know if you wanted to I know that Danny just showed, um, you know, what it looks like on a Mac, but if there's anything else you want to um, discuss concerning what what the two device, the differences between the two devices. I think not not any real limitations besides, you know, the the change that Microsoft is rolling out now to default to um, a files on demand only. Um, the Windows client works a little bit differently, but, you know, the storage is the same, you know, it's all cloud based, so we get the same amount of storage um different devices etc so so yeah that's about it okay um there's a question here about um how do we compare onedrive sync versus code 42 crash plan as far as auto backup and fall back to prior versions hmm so um you know i have to apologize I, i'm not as familiar with code 42 crash plan um so OneDrive is great for, uh, again, you know, personal files and, and and the folders and things you're you're working on. It's probably not not uh, the best backup for all sorts of system files and other you know computer type o, you know OS files. Um, so it's a, it's a great way to back up your uh, your work data, but not, not you know computer OS stuff, which I think code 42 does, uh, although I'm, I'm not super familiar. Oh, uh, we do have Michele on, he can, um, I'll, I'll see if I can unmute him so that, uh, um, you're unmuted Michele, if you want to talk about crash plan. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, the, the Rafael is right for, uh, crash plan backs up everything automatically 24 seven 
laptops, desktop, all the files, your emails and everything. In particular, you're on a Mac. Uh, OneDrive only backs up the things you purposely put in OneDrive. Yeah. So your system settings, as, as Raphael said, a lot of the other things, which are not files that you put in OneDrive are not backed up by OneDrive. It's, it's, a, it's two different, two great systems, but completely different functions. Different use cases. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you, Michele. I see there's, there was a question from uh, Diana about uh, in the past, uh, I was uh, oh, trouble working between Windows and Mac sync. Is there any recommendations? I would say, you know, um, we'd have to get into the specific case and feel free to call it into the service desk. Um, you know, we should be able to work that out for you. Thank you guys. I know we're I know we're at time, um, and I and I think most of the questions have been answered in the chat. Um, what I'll do, guys, is again I'll take this recording. I'll put, I'll host it online and send you um, the video, and as well as um, you know a bunch of helpful links about using OneDrive. Um, if you have any questions, um, you know for for Raphael or Danny or or Michaeli, if it if it concerns. Um, you know, uh, code 42, um, feel, free, feel free to respond to um, the follow-up email and we'll try to answer your questions as soon as we can. Um, thank you guys so much uh, for taking some time to learn more about OneDrive. Thank you to Raphael, Danny, and, um, and I think Johnny was also in the chat and Michaela who uh, chimed in about uh, uh, Crash Plan. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Take care, all.